How's it going, everybody? This is Dave Meltzer. We're going to be here for the next two hours talking pro wrestling. We've got Brian Alvarez of Figure Four Weekly with us, and our special guest today will be Donovan Morgan of All Pro Wrestling. So we'll be talking about the current wrestling scene, uh, the latest news, and everything else. Brian, how are you today? I'm doing good. That's good. I guess we will start. Well, before we talk about SmackDown, we can mention that the um, the May 9th debut um, of the new, quote, WCW promotion, which is the WWF, um, was a, and television show on May the 12th have both been postponed. Uh, they are looking at sometime in June, probably early June, I'm guessing the probably the 9th, June 9th, that's just a guess, as far as the first date of the new company. Basically, here we are. Uh, we're... Uh, what are we? We're about five weeks away. They haven't. They have hired 24 wrestlers, um, which is not enough. No agents. Um, you know, it's, it's basically, you know, no writers, no whatever. Um, you know, no office staff, and it it would have been a rush job. And that time slot we talked about before. It's very important to make a strong first impression in that time slot, as the XFL showed, um, and just to go on there and to rush to to get a show on the air and kind of just. Throw a show out there to people in that time slot that isn't a good show will be a failure right away, and I think they recognize that. And um, it's a good idea. Given, yeah, it's a great idea. They're giving themselves an extra month to start. Um, actually, five. Actually, it looks like they're laying four to five more weeks. So, mm -hmm. um, so anyway, that's the situation as far as the first TV show. So the Trenton show's been canceled. The shows that were scheduled for all the Wednesdays in that month um, are canceled. Uh, none of them had actually been announced anyway, and. Uh, Gonna start in June, most likely. Again, that everything's a work in progress. I guess we could talk about SmackDown. Did I, mean, I think if Nitro went off the air and the show wasn't starting up the next week, then it really doesn't matter at that point. You know how many weeks they wait to start it up. It's best just get everything going, get some agents, get some wrestlers, figure out what they're gonna do with the top guys, and then once everything's I mean, in place, get, start get, it get some writers and write some long-term angles. Yeah. Get a plan. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So let's go. Yeah. Can you hear I me? Mean, I mean that. I mean, it's like, you know, like, there's not even writers to start writing a plan. So, therefore, you to go, you know, you know what I mean? You've got to go on there. You've got to come up with, you know, ideas where you want to go, how you want to get there. Um, certainly, you got to hire writers first. So, yeah, it's, it's, they're not ready. That's, and that they're doing the right thing. Uh, SmackDown did a 4.3 rating and a 7 share, um, which is, eh, I don't know. It's not great rating for SmackDown by any means. Um, there was pretty much, you know, Survivor was out there, um, you know, so that that did a strong number. Uh, the NBC shows were in reruns, and they did actually pretty bad. NBC actually finished third. Um, so uh, there was some baseball around the country, so that might have hurt a little bit. Last last year, there was a big drop in the rating, um, which you could say is the first week of baseball, or you could say it's also the week after the unusually high number for the week before WrestleMania. Now this is back. The 4-3 is what really the show's been pretty much in the ballpark of since February anyway. And maybe just last week was unusually high because it was the, the last show before Mania. Yeah. So, anyway, what are your thoughts on the show last night? I actually thought SmackDown was a pretty damn good show last night. Did you and, really? Because uh, I didn't. Really? <laughs> Go ahead. No. Yeah, I mean, I thought the... Um, I guess where can we start? I don't even have uh, all the notes here. I thought that, like, the three-way with uh, Regal, Angle, and Benoit... It was too short, but for three minutes, I thought it was a pretty damn good three minutes. I thought uh, Big Show and Jeff Hardy... As far as entertainment, I think it was the most entertaining Big Show match in a long time. But uh, most of that was just the Hardys and the finish and everything. And, I mean, people cared about that. And I liked the Jim Ross, Steve Austin interview. And I uh, thought the main event was it was pretty good. I thought the uh, pedigree finish was awesome and got a title change and everything. So I liked it. I thought the um, I thought the Jim Ross Steve Austin thing was tremendous. I thought Steve Austin was was really great last night. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought that the three-way was really good for a three-minute match. Um, you know, as good as it's going to be in three minutes, they did a lot of really good spots and clever spots. And uh, I thought Steve Regal was very funny when Angle wouldn't break the hold, and he's kind of giving him the look. And I thought you know it was hilarious when when um, Regal was talking to Angle about you know my my Regal stretch is a great submission, and, and and like Angle thought he was kidding. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, some of that stuff I liked. The um, I was going to say as far as um. The show Jeff Hardy match, I think that probably why I didn't like it as much as you is I know what the purpose was of it, and I think it didn't accomplish its purpose. Mm -hmm. In that, you know, you, and I think you know, you know what I mean by that. I mean, the designation of that was this was supposed to be um, where a star and a headliner. 
puts over a mid-card guy to get the mid-card guy over into star territory. That was the designation of what this was about. And to me, it was just like one of those jobs that like, you know, that they would do with like Scott Hall would do in WCW for Hector Garza. It's like, yeah, he got pinned. Yeah. But you know, Hulk Hogan, it looked like a Hulk Hogan job to me. Mm -hmm. you know, it's like it's like you know he you know he didn't put anybody over. I mean it, it, so it didn't bother me so much because I don't look at show as like a top guy that's going to be elevating anybody. I mean I almost look at the Hardys as bigger stars than Big Show. I mean they probably don't see it that way at all because he's making million dollars <laughs> or whatever. But uh, I mean I just saw it as you know these uh, you know the Hardys beating the Big Show. I didn't see it as like an elevation thing or anything because I don't look at Big Show as like man if someone beats Big Show they're a superstar now. Yeah, well that was sort of especially the Big Show lately. Yeah, he's gained more weight again too. That's not good. Um, Helmsley and Jericho, I thought was good. I mean, you know, pretty good match, no doubt. Um, but nowhere near the caliber of the matches they had last year. I mean, they had like yeah. two or three TV matches that like blew that one away. But it was a good match. I think that um, you know, in watching it, there's total difference in Jericho between now and last summer. Last summer, when Jericho and Helmsley were wrestling, it was like Jericho. Everybody saw Jericho as this guy ready to beat Helmsley, ready for his big win, and ready to be a main eventer. And now, watching that match, they see Helmsley is a superstar, and Jericho is a mid-carder, and the match was just a superstar against a mid-carder who had a good wrestling match. I mean, there was yeah. the emotion that was there last year in their matches, it wasn't even on, you know in the same ballpark last night. Yeah. So, um, aside from that, you know, I thought the first hour of the show kind of dragged, up, and then um, up until the, uh, the, the uh, handicap match, and then the um, the Austin thing. The one thing I liked about the Austin interview was Jim Ross. And I, I know there's like he, a lot he was of good too. There's a lot of commentators that can do a good job at commentary, but when you ask you ask them to actually do some acting, they're like hideous. And Jim Ross, he's a great commentator, and he did a hell of a job acting last night too. All through the show, you know those little vignettes too, like when Vince was yeah, the vignettes and everything. early. Yeah, yep. and then you know the other thing was when he came out. And, you know, it's Oklahoma City, and he's, you know, so identified with Oklahoma and grew up there and everything. I mean, he looked like he was about to cry. And I don't know, you know, you know what I mean, like, you know, overwhelmed at this great response. And every mm -hmm. time he goes to Oklahoma City, he gets that exact same response. So it's not like it's anything new, but it, it's never been on television before. Yeah. And that just made him so much more of a baby face to turn Austin heel. You know what I mean? It was yeah. that little things like that. You're right. Jim Ross was, was incredible on that incredible performance, too. So. I mean, if it had Michael Cole out there in Michael Cole's hometown, they beat him up. Also, <laughs> he was a bigger baby face than ever. Yeah, that, that's what they. Yeah, I, I, I just Steve Austin. What a what a great job he did of. I, I, I just think like just acting. Yeah, he was awesome. Yeah, kind of that, just going like kind of being like a little bit remorseful, but it was just like you know way deep buried down there, and he was just he hated everybody. Yeah, and and uh, yeah, so. Yeah, I, am. I, am. I like that. I like that part of it. Uh, they did a good job on that. Um, they are supposed. To, what are they doing? Oh, Monday. Linda McMahon will be there on Monday and and uh, make some big announcement regarding the future of the WWF, probably involving Mick Foley or something. Maybe Mick. <laughs> the funny Foley thing last night, she goes, um, "It felt great, Vince, to kick you in the um, how do you say it, the gonads." And I thought, <laughs> when has Vince ever said gonads? No, he did. He says Monday. grapefruits. No, he said gonads on Monday. He did. Oh, did he? Oh, I missed that show. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's why she that's used what that. I get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was uh, doing that in his in that really long interview he did early in the show. So yeah, grape. Yeah, so then she sliced the grapefruits and everything. So um, I I don't know. I think we're seeing like uh, we're building to Mick Foley and Vince. Yeah. Uh, so let's see what else are we building to. Uh, Undertaker and Kane obviously against Triple H and Austin, which is kind of a throwaway. But uh, I don't know. We've had three great pay-per-views, and I actually, we'll probably have the next one will probably be good too, because they have so much talent. It's it's not impossible for them to do a bad pay-per-view, because they did two or three of them last year. But uh, they haven't. What was the last bad one? A bad Survivor, Survivor, Survivor Series, right? Was Survivor Series bad? I'm trying to remember. It's a bad buy rate. Yeah, um, I can't remember for the whole show. King was of the bad. Ring I stunk. I mean, oh, that was horrible. That yeah, was no, that I'm, was the last really horrible pay-per-view. Yeah, nothing so. could even compare. But uh, that's almost a year now. That's June. So, I mean, Armageddon was great. Although, Armageddon was not great till the main event. But the main event saved it. And then, you know, Royal Rumble and uh, No Way Out and WrestleMania, they were all great. So, I wonder what they'll do for King of the Ring this year. I mean, last year they had these brackets and everyone's 
having so much fun figuring these brackets out and all these great matches we're going to have on camera. <laughs> we got none of them. And they do, like, the absolute worst possible matches in the brackets. <laughs> and I wonder if they learned their lesson. Yeah, it's like... Uh... <laughs> Remember there was, like, Ben Juan Guerrero and... Ben Juan and, and Guerrero all lost in the and Guerrero, out Guerrero and like lost to Val Venus, right? And then yeah. Rikishi ends up in the finals and yeah. Oh god. Yeah. Anyway. Rikishi in bad shape too. Yeah. Let's see, any uh any other news before we start hitting emails? That's about it. This is the calm after the storm. Yes, absolutely. We got we still get tons of emails though. Uh let's see, where do we start? Um God, this, this is someone who actually sent the inflation-adjusted gate for every WrestleMania, and with inflation, with adjustments for inflation, um, let me see if this is right. Um, with, with, when you adjust it for inflation, WrestleMania 6 was actually the biggest, the one with Hogan and Warrior. Uh, it was like 4 million, right? Days, well, it be 4.6 million. Uh, it was 3.5 .5 million originally. But it's just a 4.6. 4.6 uh, U.S. Canadian. A uh, U.S. Oh. So uh, this one that we had Sunday was the second biggest. Uh, the third one would have been WrestleMania three, which would now by today's money be two million four hundred seventy thousand dollars and two hundred eighty two hundred two million four hundred seventy thousand two hundred eighty six dollars. So. So that's the deal there. Nothing uh, in the billions. Nothing in the billions now. Uh, I was wondering what the structure of Big Show's contract was. The WF has released Road Dog, Midian, and Cat, but not Big Show. They want him in shape so bad, and every time he doesn't get in shape, why don't they just release him? Um, I think that the contracts are... are, are well, for, for one thing, uh, I'm, I'm sure that Midian had probably something in his contract where they could release him, um, and Road Dog, you know, Road Dog, um, you know, violated uh, company drug policy, so they had every right to release him. Um, I think Big Show hasn't violated any policy, um, Although, actually, I shouldn't say that because I know that they have in the contract that you have to be in shape, and that's what they always used to wait for. Basically, they haven't fired him because they don't want to fire him. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they. I think that's that's your answer. I think that they still think there's something there. Um, and certainly before, I think they didn't want to fire him because they figured he would go to the other side, and they don't want to give a talent to the other side. Now, you know, uh, there's, there's a lot of guys in that type of a situation now that probably would get fired that a month ago would not. Yeah. I think he had more uh, success in WCW. He was done better. Yeah, well, you know why? Just the WCW. way they used him and everything. Not just that. It was the same thing of when he first came in that we talk about all the time, the illusion of size. Big show, when you have Undertaker and Kane and, and you know, even like Median was there and, and all of these, you know, tests. You know, he's like bigger than everybody else, but he ain't that much bigger. Whereas in WCW, you only had Kevin Nash, who was a giant in, in WCW as well. And most of those top guys like Ric Flair and everything, he could be like a total, you know, giant in, yeah. w, in WWF. You know, he had to get by on, on actual ability rather than being a giant. And ability-wise, you know, he ain't that great. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Uh, who would you say? What was he trying off the top rope last night, by the way? It wasn't an elbow They claimed it was an it. elbow, but it didn't look like that to me. It looked like it's... It, well, at the it end, like it looked a like a cannonball into the swimming pool or something. <laughs> he, he threw his elbow out there, though. <laughs> okay, well... Nobody was nobody was laying there waiting for it, that's for sure. No moonsault. We never got to see that big show moonsault. He just got too big. Yeah. They, that's right, but when he was in training when he was in training we always heard this giant guy who can do a moonsault and we actually never saw Now you know, he did in Japan and I think he did it maybe once or twice on Nitro, the drop kick off the top ropes. Remember that? Oh yeah, yeah. In, I think he's in the WWF actually. Did he do it oh you know what? Yeah, I think he did it once. Yeah. I think he may have done it once. Um That was quite a sight. I, I remember he worked in San Jose, and um, I think it was San Jose. I know it was, it was a show that I was at, and it was like this weirdest thing. And, and, and it was like, and they were saying like he didn't do this any other nights of that tour, where he was, he was, it was a big boss man. You know how bad those big boss man, big show matches were. And this one, it was just like, he was up there, he was doing drop kicks, and he was running around. He never stopped for like eight minutes. I'm going like, oh. wow. You know, what is it? He was, he was huge then, too. So uh, it's like the only night he ever did that. Anyway. In fact, the agent report, I talked to someone afterwards, and I go, did the agent report say anything about Big Show? And says, yeah, he was unusually um, active. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, we could argue all day whether WrestleMania 17 was the best pay-per-view of all time. 
I wouldn't go of all time, but I I would say the best WrestleMania and, and maybe best WWF show of all time. It was, it was I think overall maybe maybe I would say it was the best. But anyway, would you agree that no promotion has ever put on three pay per views in a row as good as Royal Rumble, No Way Out, and WrestleMania? Three. You know, WCW put on a lot of good ones, but I only remember two that June and July in um, '96 that were like both like awesome in a row. Yeah. So. I don't. I think August would have been Road Wild, and those always stunk. So um, I don't know what May was that year, um, and I can't remember WF ever putting on three in a row this good. So that's last. Well, let's see, last year. Well, last year they didn't because they had. Um, last year they had a really good Royal Rumble. They had a really good No Way Out, but then WrestleMania wasn't that good. Yeah. And then they came back. And the Armageddon before the Royal Rumble. I think that was the uh, Boss Man that Big was, Show, wasn't it? Yeah, that. Or that, that was Survivor was, Series. That was Hunter no, no, Vince. No, that, no, no, no. It was all, it was Hunter and Vince and Bossman Big Show. I think those were the two top matches, and that wasn't okay. good. So then they came back um, after Mania, and Backlash was really good. And then I forget what was May. Was May the sixty minute match? No, that was or was it July? May was the sixty minute match with um, Rock yes. and Hunter. So that was a good show. But then they came back in June with King of the King Ring. King of the Ring. Right. So then July you came back with um, uh, what was it? July was that great show, the fully loaded with uh, that was a great show. Then August would have been SummerSlam. I think SummerSlam wasn't that good, if I remember. So, yeah, I think that's probably, that probably is right. Uh, mm -hmm. Someone's going to come up with something, some period of three straight great shows. Um, but uh, it may, may, may be right. We've got Undertaker Kane right. in the main event, so uh, it's going to be a challenge this time. Uh, to get, make it four, yes. Uh, oh, we've got tons of emails about Robot Wars, by the way. We have a lot of listeners in... Um, in uh, the UK, it's awesome. Um, I'll read a few of these. Uh, just listen to your show. Uh, you're commenting about Robot Wars. Yes, it's popular here. It's a lot better than they sounded when you read the TNN information. They finished another series, and it's good fun to watch. It's on 645 on BBC2, so it's got a great time slot. The robot names you were calling out, Sergeant Bash and Matilda, they are house robots in the UK series. They are the Guardians, and are constructed by BBC Special Effects Department, so they're very impressive. Um, we got a lot more of them. Let's see. Uh... Do you think WF will continue with Jericho versus Triple H, or was it a one-time thing? Well, I mean, they'll wrestle again, but it's a one-time thing. Uh, is there enough time for HHH to feud with Jericho at the next pay-per-view? No, no, no such luck. No, not, not the next one. Uh, a lot of comments, a lot of very, uh, uh, what's it called? A lot of a lot of praise for Nova yesterday. People liked him a lot. He was good, very good. He was awesome. In fact, in fact uh, we're going to replay it next, a week from today, which is Good Friday. We're going to be off doing a live, from doing a live show. So we're going to replay the Nova show from yesterday. Uh, what's going on with Hulk Hogan? Uh, he is uh, trying to start his own wrestling company. So what's going on with him? Uh, this is from Zach, who says, I was wondering if uh, H has or ever will go back to Hayabusa as a name. Actually, he already has. He's wrestling May 5th. I think, he, I think right before he got hurt, or right before he had the surgeries, he came back as Hayabusa, but he's going to be wrestling May the 5th. Hayabusa and Great Sasuke against, I think it's Mr. Ganasuke and Tetsuhiro Kuroda at the Kawasaki Stadium parking lot in one of those electric, barbed wire, explosive matches. So, uh, anyway, that's his name. Uh, also, do you think Yuji Nagata could carry a promotion on his back? I don't know how strong mm -hmm. his back is. Uh, he's, Yuji Nagata is an awesome worker, but it's one of those things where in New Japan, you know, they've got that, that mentality that it's going to be Nakanishi, so... And everyone's going to complain forever. I think Nakanishi's probably going to beat him on, on uh, was it Monday's the, is it Monday? Yeah, Monday's the Osaka Dome. So, anyway, so everyone's going to be sad about that. And my last question is, how many more years do you think Vader has? Why don't they have, uh, I'm trying to think. You can have Nagata beat him, and then if uh, Nakanishi ends up with the title, you got a bunch of matches there. So Nakanishi would be defending his title against someone who can work and have some good matches as champion. Okay, so that would mean Nagata would wrestle... Actually, you know what? I think um, I think that they're going to put Fujita over Norton. I think, and I think they should for sure, for sure they should. Which means they, the New Japan means they probably won't. But um, if they, so if Fujita is going to defend, Fujita and Nakanishi is a pretty tough match. Um, <laughs> Fujita and Nagata, Nagata is that good that it would probably be an excellent match, or at least a good mm -hmm. match. So yeah, you know what? They should, and then they could have Nakanishi beat uh, Fujita down the line, and you still got, yeah, that'd be good. That's good. Okay, this is from Rob Harvey. He uh, goes, I heard you mention on the show yesterday that you wanted feedback on the legitimate ratings of Robot Wars. This, we're only going to do two more Robot Wars ones, even though we got a lot more than this. 
Uh, on the BBC, it's presented as a student-type geeky show for teenagers. It gets shafted from primetime weekday to early afternoon Sunday, which tells you the kind of ratings it really gets. Uh, but it does a decent rating for a Sunday time slot. Realistically, TNN is buying garbage. And as someone who knows something about both subjects, it will shock me if WCW gets a worse time slot than this. Prepare to be shocked. That's all i got to say. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's getting prime time and WCW in. Uh, and this is uh, from someone actually not in the U.K., but in Canada. I just want to write a quick note to let you know that we get Robot Wars here in Edmonton. It's awesome. They get a bunch of mechanically inclined people, sometimes kids. Geek. <laughs> and divide the robots into weight classes. Oh, God. Like like the UFC. Then they have many different kinds of matches to decide who's the best robot. At the end of the show, the result is usually the same. Most of the robots involved are maimed or destroyed, and one robot is the winner. We get it on PBS in Edmonton. You know what? It's on PBS. There's PBS stations in the United States that have carried this, too. Um, I do know that, actually. So I'm not sure where it originates from, but the host talks with a British accent. Yes, it comes from Britain. Uh, let's see. So anyway, that's the story there. It's from Joel who goes... I really enjoyed the show with Nova. He was a great guest. He should be booked again in the future. Uh, he will be. I read on the Internet that WrestleMania will be in Florida next year. Is this true? It's not 100% true. Um, there are actually several sites they're looking at, but the, the leading site absolutely is that, um, God, what's Tropicana Park? Tropicana mm -hmm. Field uh, that the Devil Rays play at. Uh, but they haven't done a site survey or anything. It's, it's not like it's done, but it, it is the leading candidate. Uh, who do you think, who do you see as the top baby face that will feud with Austin for the WF title? Uh, Hunter. Obviously, it's Hunter and then, uh, and then Rock. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Just got a copy of the last J Cup. Even though it was short, I thought the Shima Ricky Marvin match showed both guys have a great upside. Yeah, that was good. That was a really good match. Ricky Marvin reminds me of Ray Jr. early in his career. Uh, yeah, I, I would agree. And Shima works very American as far as playing with the crowd. I just want to know what the outlook is for both men in their countries, because I'm sure they don't have much chance in the United States for now. I mean, Ricky Marvin does well as an undercard guy in EMLL, um, but, I mean, because of his size, he's kind of an experience level. You know, he's kind of like uh, mid to low card. Uh, Shima's, you know, probably the number one guy for the Tori Human promotion, and, uh, you know, it's a good promotion. If you ever watch Tori Human tapes, they're a lot of fun. Uh, also, when Undertaker and Kane go back to main events, don't you think it's time for Vince to call up Sean and say, clean up your act and come to TV this week? Well, you know, like, with Sean, that. you know, they tried with Sean. I, I mean, if, you know, I don't know what to say about Sean anymore. You know what I mean? It's like, he's had, um, how many years? Everyone knows what the score is. He, he you know, they, they delayed and delayed and delayed, you know, whatever it was, and then he showed up. You know, they were going to shoot a big angle. He was going to be wrestling Hunter at this next pay-per-view. That was the plan, and he blew it. And and I mean, as far as is he done for good? I mean, no one knows. You know, I mean, he he may not be, but um, they will they will not make any. I can tell you that I do not expect at any time in the near future that they will make any kind of plans for any big Shawn Michaels comeback because they did and it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. Uh, what is the date of WrestleMania 18? Um, I don't know. I think it's either going to be March 31st or April 7th of 2002. Uh, how did you and Brian first meet? We've never met. And how did we end up yes. doing the show together? Um, I called him up and I go, Brian, I need help <laughs> to come do the show one day this week. So he did it and he's still there. That's right. Yeah. Uh, have you had a chance to view the email pay-per-view? I, no, I have not gotten the tape yet. Uh, I wish I had. Um, See, it's from Joe. goes, I wonder whatever happened to Magnum T.A. He was always my favorite wrestler when I was younger. He had a car accident, and then after an interview with Tony Giovanni, he sort of disappeared. I just know that um, he's, living in, um, he's living in Virginia, and I don't know what he's doing now, but he's around, and he's, you know, he's, uh, you know, but he's, you know, after he had that car accident, he was never really able to come back. I think, um, you know, his spine was, he had some spinal problems, and he, I think he never really regained use of his hand, and then he doesn't walk well or anything like that. Uh, but he, he did TV announcing for WCW uh, for many years, um, and then it just kind of, he really wasn't that good as an announcer and just kind of didn't last. Uh, Speaking of the hand, remember we were talking about uh, great WCW moments? Got stuck mm -hmm. in six. Arn yeah. Anderson's retirement speech. Yeah. Yeah. You know that what else? That was awesome. Arn Anderson's retirement speech and... Um, the Arn Anderson interviews building up to the reuniting of the Four Horsemen before Ric Flair's thing in Greenville, like for four straight weeks. Yeah. Remember when they kept, when Dean Malenko and Benoit kept asking him and he kept saying no? Mm -hmm. That was great stuff. Uh, looking at the current WCW roster, it seems Booker T is probably the most marketable wrestler still under contract. Um, 
Well, a lot of the guys have been fired. Marketable? Um, I mean, Scott Steiner and Bill Goldberg have not been fired, if you look at it that way. But and, and Bill Booker T has not been signed by WWF yet, although he that's kind of uh, just a formality. Everyone expects that'll happen. If Rock jumps to WCW, wouldn't that cripple Booker T's chance of being elevated since Booker T's biggest knock is that he's a poor man's rock? Um, yeah, but you got to get people to watch that TV. That's a lot more important. If, if Booker T's the number one guy on a show that no one watches, um, he's not the number one guy in anything. Plus, the reason he got over to Poor Man's Rock wasn't anything that, you know, it wasn't like his idea. He was told, you do this stuff. Yeah, I know. So they'll yeah. totally differentiate him from the Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's going to change. He'll, he'll change. Why did WCW fire Vampiro? Because WWF didn't want him. That's your answer. Uh, I don't understand how they could want Sean Stasiak and not Vampiro. Um, yes, that's strange. Um, I, I sort of can. Vampiro didn't do himself any favors. Uh, in the last couple of months. At the same time, uh, Sean Stasiak, I don't know. You know, like we said, Sean Stasiak... So favors at the end in the WWF either. Who's Stasiak? Yeah, I know. Uh, do you think Vampiro and Conan will go back to EMLL or something with AAA? I mean, I don't know what's going to happen with Conan. Um, Vampiro, good shot of going... I think Vampiro is a good shot of him ending up back in Mexico, although I'm sure that's not what he wants to do. And Conan, uh, who knows? Is he looking at XPW? Uh, I don't think he's going to be allowed to because of his uh, WCW contract. Um, I know he's advertised to be there, but I can't imagine him doing it. Now, a lot of these guys, actually, um, Vampiro and Conan, there's going to be a lot of work for those guys for a couple of months. You know, just on the independent scene and foreign mm-hmm. tours and stuff like that. There's, I think they're going to, you know, there's going to be a period where they don't really have to go to a regular promotion because there's going to be, for, you know, just like things here and there that pop up. Um, well, how are their well, how are their contracts structured then, where they couldn't go to XPW but they could go to another independent group? They can't. They can't. I'm saying like after. I'm saying after. Oh, okay, okay. Well, well Van, Vampiro's cut. Vampiro could do whatever he wants. Conan, um, Conan hasn't been given 90 days notice, so for Conan, he can't. He's got to sit and and wait, basically collect his check until he's fired. Is basically his yeah. deal, and then or or end up in the WWF because um, he hasn't been. He has not been told that he's not going there, and they haven't made their roster yet. So you know those decisions. I mean, I know that on that first, whatever it is, that first meeting, he didn't fare too well, but it wasn't like these, that decision was etched in stone. Because they didn't mm-hmm. tell. If it was, he'd have been called and said that he was fired. You know what I mean? And he has, and that yeah. has not happened. So he's in that list of people they haven't decided about just yet. Okay, we've got Donovan Morgan on the line. Donovan, how are you today? Good. How are you guys doing? Hey. We're doing really good. We're doing really good. You know, um, when I was, I was actually talking to Mike Modest last night. and. Yeah. Uh, we were we were talking just about uh, you know the current situation in wrestling and and, and everything like that, and um, one of the things um, how's uh, how's everything going with all pro wrestling right now? Well, right now that was like one of the main things I wanted to talk about. Right now, all pro wrestling uh, is doing probably the best it's ever done, and we're growing. You know, one thing that's always you know been a factor in the past was Roland was always on the internet and you know always plugging away at APW, and now. He's, he's kind of drawn away from that. He's not so much on the Internet as much anymore, and we're really, there's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff going on that, uh, that you know, a lot of people don't know about. But I know, like, when Mike got his, his notice, you know, that he was released, I, I was really, you know, happy to see that he really wasn't that upset about it, and he was really taking it like a champ. I mean, I, I didn't hear him complain about it. He said, well, you know, that's the business, and... Now I'm going to focus on um, APW, and and so that that's really good. We've got a lot of things going on right now, like our boot camp, for example. Our boot camp last year signed up 65 people, and that was that was a record number. And we just started uh, um, our first uh, class of the year in February, and it was 37 guys. So we had to actually break up that camp. So we're now we're doing two camps. We're breaking uh, breaking it in half. And even though we're the top school, you know, I feel, or one of the top schools, you know, we're always doing things to try to improve. Like we have uh, a championship bodybuilder, Greg Thurston, who's doing, you know, now the strength and conditioning portions uh, of the class. And since I talked to you last time, I know when I talked to you last, I was really down on the body situation here. And that's really, you know, something that, that it doesn't turn around overnight, but since I talked to you last, is really coming along and... uh you know, I think I think we're on the right track. The boot camp's awesome, and now we're t- we're talking to some possible angel investors. 
um, and we're close to, to possibly doing something with TV. So a lot of good stuff going on, and, and everyone here is, is more excited than they've ever been. So it's a great thing. What's um, as far as how how is your reaction? I mean, you've been working the UPW shows, and you're doing the feud with UPW both in Southern and Northern California. How's the reaction? You know, how, how do you how do you sense the reaction both in Southern and Northern California? I think that I, I think that the when we first went down there, we did the invasion. Um, man, boy, I'm telling you, there was a lot of heat there, and I think that uh, you know, it was definitely something good. Even though, you know, Modest and myself and Tony and Roland are still going down there, the feud with Rick Bassman is kind of like Ixnade, like it's it's kind of over. And, you know, I was talking to, to a couple of people like Chris Daniels and, and Modest, and we were like, man, you know, it's too bad we couldn't really push that a little bit farther because it was just getting so much heat, you know, Roland out there and Rick out there together in the ring, you know, people related to that, uh, you know, the smarts, they related to that seen it all on the internet and i don't know i think the reaction's good especially when the upw guys come down here you know our fans are really glad to see you know a new faces and and good talent and and the same thing you know um vice versa when we go down there i think the reaction's really positive why was the uh program with rick and uh, roland pulled back well it just it really it wasn't done like on or just run its course yeah i think i think rick had just thought hey you know it ran its course and and so we kind of just <clears throat> went, you know, down from there. But we're still, you know, Roland still comes out to the ring with, with uh, Modest and myself when we tag, but it's not like anything directly, you know, at Rick. So, uh, but it's still good. It's, it's still getting over, you know. It's still a really awesome thing, and we're going to do something um, on the 14th. They're actually coming down to Vallejo. So that that was awesome last time. They backed their UPW uh rig into the building and they all jumped out jumped in the ring it was really you know got a lot of heat do you have an idea what chris is going to be doing because they did the loser leaves town match and then uh the whole wcw thing fell through so now you kind of you kind of stuck that was, more, that, that, was more, that, was more, that was more upw than apw but yeah yeah so yeah i don't i i know chris isn't going to be wrestling this month at all but i'm sure that he'll be back uh in may uh that's my guess anyways i just I actually just spent over oh, the weekend with them in Chicago um, when we were up there for MCW Midwest Championship Wrestling, and we were talking a lot about it. Um, yeah, I think he'll come back. I know he helps out a lot with the booking there and stuff, so I think it's just a matter. I know he's he's going to try and delve into Japan right now, and that's his first priority. So that's mm -hmm. what I've heard from Chris. Now you've been you mentioned you were in Chicago and everything. You've been. Getting your name out and wrestling in a lot of different places. What I mean, what places have you been besides uh, Chicago and, and UPW? Um, well, I'm going to Harley Races. I'm going to do something for him on the 11th and 12th of May. Um, of course, I've been doing uh, UPW, APW, uh, and then I'm doing you know small indies here and there. The thing is, it's like right now I'm to the point where I, I won't just go out and just do any old independent promotion um but now you know i've kind of built that up it's not i'm like i'm not saying i'm a superstar or anything because i'm far from it but you know i can kind of pick and choose um you know between certain indies and right now uh mcw is actually like one of my favorites i kind of compare it to to apw in a way because uh the guy that runs it brian zinner he uh he was bringing in a lot of of uh talent a lot of you know, big name talent like King Hong Bundy and Honky Tonk Man and those kind of guys for a while, and then he was losing money, and so he said, "Well, I'd rather lose money with with the young talent than with the old talent." So I'm going to bring in a bunch of young guys. So that's what he's been doing. Like last show, Simon Diamond, uh, Danny Doring, Chris Chetty, uh, Vic Capri, uh, Reckless Youth, myself, Chris Daniels. You know, we were all on the show, and I'm telling you, it's it's definitely comparable to APW as far as the in-ring style um, you know a lot a lot of good wrestlers there and that's probably one of my favorites so he gives me a lot of work I, I actually I went to Chicago three times in, in the month of March so alone so he's, hmm. he's actually oh. running you know quite regularly and so that along with APW UPW and Harley Race in the mix you know I stay pretty busy as far as like the guys that you're training right now, and, and some of the younger guys in APW, 
Is there anyone that like stands out? Mike was really praising uh, Miyake. Yes, Miyake France is one of those guys. Like he is, he is a natural when it comes to athletic ability, and he's a natural when it comes to understanding psychology. Um, he's got a ton of promise, and if he puts on about ten more pounds of muscle, you know, he'll definitely be in the hunt and definitely make some money in the business. Um, there's another guy too. Uh, his name is uh, his name's Tommy Blaze. His real name's Corey Carey, and he's going to be making his debut um, next weekend in Vallejo. But he is going to make some money in this business. He is definitely uh, really good. Once he gets some matches under his belt, I'm sure people are going to be talking about him a lot. So we've definitely got you know those those key guys that are coming up. Those those future main eventer you know type caliber guys that that. Um, we're slowly developing, and there's not just one of them. There's actually, you know, two or three. So that's definitely a good thing. How's Boyce Legrand done in the last couple of months? Because I probably haven't seen him like live in uh, was since the last time I saw you guys wrestle. Boyce is one of those guys that is he's such a nice guy, and he's good in the ring, and he's a natural in the ring. But he's one of those guys that just disappoints me from a promotion standpoint because he doesn't like push himself to the limit you know like he doesn't market himself he doesn't uh really spend that much time in the gym it's pretty much just a weekend thing for him and you know that modest has talked to him i've talked to him and we're just like you know come on boys come on and he's like well i'm getting married right now after i get married now i'm going to turn it around so that's what we're waiting uh, for voice is one uh, of those guys that is <laughs> is a could be a big a big star if he just you know give himself the opportunity and it was like with me, when I started pushing myself out there on the indie scene, you know, it wasn't like I didn't have the luxury that Mike Modest had where a lot of people knew who Mike was because Mike was just incredible uh, and phenomenal, new psychology. Uh, and, and so that just in itself, the word traveled and, you know, he got out there. With me, there was a lot of tapes sent out, a lot of talking to people, and I really had to hustle, but... You know, it, it feels good to have earned that. And so I hope the same thing happens to boys here soon. And we've got a lot of emails in here about various and sundry things in wrestling when it gets to. Uh, this is from Tim who goes, In the early 90s, did the Duke of Dorchester, who was Pete Doherty, uh, win the WWF title from Hulk Hogan in the Boston Gardens? No, absolutely not. This never happened. I think <laughs> that Pete Doherty did get a win, who always lost in Boston. I think he did get a win on one show, uh, like at his last match, but it... It absolutely was not against Hulk Hogan. Uh, a lot of praise for Steve Austin from last night. Donovan, did you watch the show last night? I actually didn't get a chance to. Okay, yeah, Steve Austin was uh, did a tremendous interview segment. Uh, this is, what did you think of the poll where Canada came in first as producing the best pro wrestlers? Do you agree or not? I disagree. I was going to look at um, the country that produces the most pro wrestlers is Mexico. I don't, as far as the most good ones... I would say certainly up until a few years ago, I would say Japan. Now it might not be the Japan. Um, it, it might be United States, I, but I would not say Canada. Uh, who are the top five amateur wrestlers in professional wrestling? Uh, Kurt Angle was a gold medalist, so he'd be up there. Um, Dan Severn certainly in his day. Uh, Steve Williams in his day. Uh, Jun Akiyama, Yuji Nagata, Manabu Nakanishi. Um, are there any of them leaving out, Brian? He said the best. They said the top amateur style. Oh, okay. You know, the top the, the top amateurs that are in pro wrestling, not necessarily the best workers. I mean, the best workers that are... The best pro wrestling workers that were great amateur wrestlers would be uh, Yuji Nagata, Jun Akiyama, and Kurt Angle. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think I'm, I'm... I may be missing somebody. But, uh, this is Justin who says, The Big Show did a top rope drop kick against Viscera on Raw in December 1999, but it was not picture perfect. Uh, somebody actually has three shows, three pay-per-views in a row that m may have been better. 1989, WCW, Chi-Town Rumble, which actually I was at that show. That was not a great show, but it was, a you know, the Flair Steamboat main event was great. Then Wrestle War, which was a hell of a show, and the Great American Bash, which was a actually a really a hell of a show. Um, they may have been as good as the last three WWFs. Um, Main event caliber wise, they were probably better, actually. As good if not better. Uh, let me see. 
Uh, oh, here's another person who has the exact same three. Chi-Town Rumble, Great American Bash, and Wrestle War 1989. Uh, let's see. Why won't WWF sign Rob Van Dam? Um, he goes, it's really pissing me off. You know, they went, WWF, they, they pulled their wrestlers that worked with Rob Van Dam, and the bottom line was is the wrestlers who worked with him did not give him a good recommendation, and WWF takes its, they, they want a harmonious locker room, because when you've got that many guys, you know, Donovan can attest to it. You, you get, like, someone, even if they're really talented, um, in the locker room was always complaining and everything. It kind of ruins the mood of the whole. Co- it can ruin the mood of the whole company, don't you think? Oh, definitely. Yeah. And, you know, and like, I'm not saying that. I, I'm, really, I'm not saying Rob Van Dam is like that, but I'm just saying that's why the WWF pulls its wrestlers. Anyway, go ahead, Donovan. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it's WWF is 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 very much based on on you know what they hear, uh, especially from the other boys. You know, the people that say, "Well, it doesn't matter what the boys say; it matters what the suits say." You know, that's not true. You know, a lot of the a lot of the boys. You know, I know when when Crash was there, Crash would tell me, "Man, you know, this locker room is and every." He goes, "I wasn't here in the past, but everyone's saying this is the best locker room that, that we've ever had here." You know, at the Fed, and and so definitely, you know, turned around to that now, and I think they're really careful of who they bring in there, and and very leery of others. That's why a lot of guys that, that a lot of people thought would be a given would be signed by them from WCW have not been signed because they want they want a, a good atmosphere and they don't want you know because it, it only takes like if the top because because a lot if if it's the, if the top guys behave a certain way that's kind of how the younger guys learn to behave you know Donovan probably like in your case you probably learned how to behave around wrestling from the guys. From modest and those kind of guys, if they, if they had like a real negative attitude, you know, you'd end up with a negative attitude. Definitely, you know, and that's. I, you know, and there were right? times, there were times, you know, where I'd say the wrong thing, and and I would get chewed out. I mean, you know, almost to the point, you know, when I was like nineteen, you know, of tears, you know, it's like. But if I didn't have that, I would know how to act. There's so many people that don't know how to act. Uh, this is another one with those same three pay-per-views. Uh, here we go. That may be uh, it. Yeah. Uh, if I remember, okay, this, if I remember, SummerSlam was a damn good show. It had the tables, ladders, and chairs. That's right, that was awesome. It had the big bump by Shane McMahon. It had the two out of three fall Benoit Jericho. Rock against Angle against That's Triple H. That's kind of disappointing, though. Yeah, Benoit Angle, it was good, though. But the undercard mm-hmm. wasn't too good, but I wouldn't call it a bad show. Val Venus and Eddie was decent. Cat against Terry. Taz against Lawler. Those weren't that good. X Pac and Road Dog. I remember that being disappointing as hell. And RTC against Too Cool and Rikishi and Undertaker against Kane. Uh, Undertaker against Kane. <laughs> it's enough of those. Uh, when will Jerry Lynn and Jerry start? Jerry Lynn actually wrestled at the Access um, and also wrestled at a house show the week before. So he's he, they just haven't debuted on TV. To Jerry, um, they just have not started him. And how long will Tarzan Boy be out? We don't know for sure, but uh, looking like uh, six months minimum. Long time. Uh, okay. What's going to happen to Joey Styles and Don Callis? Um, I don't think they know. Um, you know, a lot of, there's, there's, there's going to be people who start something up. Whether they'll get anywhere or not, I don't know. Yeah. But all of these kind of guys, they're all going to probably be getting calls. I mean, it's just, it's, it, the, the landscape, it's just a, such a strange landscape right now that, you know, I mean, these kind of guys, everyone, everyone unless they're with WWF is kind of sitting going like, okay, what's, they're kind of sitting waiting for something to happen. Right. What's the what's the reaction? I mean, you know a lot of guys, um, and, and you know, let's say like, uh, guy, you know, as far as like the, the, your students and everything, right? Does it really affect them or anything, or is that just something like it's so far away that they're just learning to be wrestlers? Well, I, I think for for most of them, it's something that's so far away, and right now, for some of them, even that you know, they think, oh man, you know, what a cool, what a cool thing, and the rest of us are going, oh my gosh, you know, and putting our hands to our foreheads. It's one of those things. I think it's too far away for the guys that are in the beginners camp. The guys that are in semi-pro now are kind of like the guys like Mark Smith and um, you know Miyaki and those kind of guys are. Well, we've kind of taken a, a double a double opinion. The first opinion that we were all talking about this the other night was this could be good uh, in the long run when someone else like a bishop or something you know doesn't go away and he starts something back up because. Definitely, there's going to be that need for the talent that WWF hasn't already snatched up. 
And let's face it, they've snatched up a lot of talent, you know, over the past year. Uh, so that could be a good thing. And, you know, the bad side is if nothing really uh, gets going, you know, you have a few startups, but they run like five TV shows like UWA and go out of business, you know, then, you know, it's bad. So in the long run, it could be bad, but you just got to keep that open mind. I think right now we're just kind of seeing how it all formulates. Yeah, there's there's definitely room as far as I, I think the public will buy a well-run second promotion easily once they're aware of it. And, but, it, but you know, the key is it needs a good time slot and it needs people who are willing to, you know, survive that early period because it's not going to be an immediate hit. It just can't what, be. What, what the problem is, and what I've seen so much, is it needs wrestling people. They need wrestling people in the rest in the right places, and they need the TV people in the right places. Like, and not mix them up. And not mix them up because yeah. you know at UWA when I was there, it was like I'm watching this, and there's TV people doing the angles and the storylines, and I'm just going, you know, whoa, you know, man, I hope this gets over because I'm you know I'm crossing my fingers here. It's kind of why I hope the uh, the whole WCW show takes off. I just wanted it to take off so bad because that'll start opening doors. I mean, if that thing, if they start WCW up and the thing just tanks, I mean, it's going to be years. Um, that I tell you what, you know, you're right. And one, the other thing that you're, that's really scary is if it does tank, and there is a possibility it will. What will really be scary at that point is people will go, "Oh my God!" Even Vince McMahon can't do it. And, well, yeah. and that's going to scare that's going to scare a lot of people off if you know if that were to happen. But what do you think the prob the probability is of that happening? I don't know. I mean, I think I, I, well, I, really I think the whole problem there. is the way that it well, might fail. A lot on this plate. First though. off, the time slot, and second off, they've only got those twenty four guys, none of whom are going to pop a huge rating. I mean, they may all be great workers and everything like that, but you know, there's nobody on that show that. You know, it's going to help draw like a five rating or anything like that. They need to bring in some names, and right now the problem is they may not be bringing in those names. It's the whole right. contract deal because of the contract. Yeah, they don't want to upset their salary structure. Right. Yeah. So I mean, if he if he had Goldberg and Steiner and Booker, Flair and everybody, and he actually he didn't care about screwing up the salary structure and decided I'm going to go for it. I'm going to turn this thing around. I think it would work. Oh, he, could, he could do. He could do it easily. Sure. With, with, you know, with if they had all those names, it. but if they don't have those names and they're in that time slot, it's going to be hard. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it'll be so, hard, but I, I really think that he'll find a way to make it work. These, this he, is, uh, do these guys have a chance in the new WCW? Jim Mitchell, um, I certainly have not heard his name at all, um, but I wouldn't say he doesn't have a chance. Kid Cash is a. I hope he gets a shot there because he's very good. Easy Money is another one who I really hope gets a shot. I think that he will because he he did real well at the end in in, in WCW. Juventud Guerrera is not going to get any shot anytime soon. He did get soon, a fight even. though. What? He got a yeah, fight he did. though. Yeah, he did. That's you're right. You're right. That's not going to help. But you know, I think that he'll. But Sean O'Hare did too. So. Yeah, but Sean O'Hare, you know, Sean O'Hare and uh, Chuck and Palumbo. Palumbo. And Palumbo and and Stasiak, they got that thing going for him that that. They will always give him a chance. You know, the tall on the body. Mm -hmm. uh, Juventud Guerrera does not have a chance of going now. I mean, down the road, you know, if he clean, you know, if he if he has a good track record for six months, I think that he could probably get in because he's a phenomenal talent. But they're not going to take him now. Chris Daniels and Mike Modest, we talked about those guys. Um, it's not going to happen now. Uh, hopefully, they will get a chance down the road. Uh, okay. Ah, another one. Um. 1989, Chi-Town Rumble, Music City Showdown, and Great American Bash. <laughs> Wasn't Music City Showdown basically a one-match show, though? Um, they had one or two other matches that were pretty decent, but it was uh, it didn't have the depth. The Great American Bash was you know, a super show, though. Also, WWF 1992, Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, and SummerSlam were very good. Um, Royal Rumble was very good. WrestleMania that year was good, but it had a terrible main event, because that was the Hogan-Sid main event. SummerSlam... SummerSlam '92, I think, was good. Was that, oh, that's Wembley. That was actually that was a hell of a show. Uh, the did they show jump right from WrestleMania to SummerSlam that year? There was no King of the Ring. When did that start? Yeah, the King of the Ring came around '94. Yeah, maybe '93, '94. Uh, let's see. Um, oh my God. Ba Robot Wars airs on Sunday nights on KTEH in the Bay Area, which is the public broadcasting station. So it's already on here. It's hosted by the guy who plays Lister on the BBC comedy Red Dwarf, which means nothing to me, but probably means a lot to our, <laughs> to our listeners in England. 
He goes, it's far better than the U.S. I was going to say tiny Yeah, I know, the U.S. knockoff uh, battle monsters. So I just want to make mention that tonight in uh, about three hours, uh, there's going to be the Pride pay-per-view. If you've got a dish, which eliminates a lot of people, most everyone actually. But anyway, that's on tonight. I wanted to make mention of that. We've got uh, Donovan Morgan of All Pro Wrestling here. We've got a full bank of phone calls. We're going to start with Terry in North Carolina. Terry, how are you? I'm doing fine, David. Okay, yes, um, well, then last year, like in 1999, when Shane Douglas had his problem with, um, ECW, um, then he tried to go to the WWF and they turned him down. What happened in that situation? Um, they negotiated, uh, with him and, um, they were real far apart on money, so he ended up going to WCW, which offered a better deal. But they did negotiate with him. Uh, the, the, the big thing with Douglas was when, um, those guys, you know, Benoit and all them walked out. You know, Douglas and Conan walked out with them, and WWF did not want Douglas or Conan, and they kind of had to go back to WCW. So that's where I think, um, I mean, they didn't want Douglas January of last year, so um, I don't know how he's going to fit in. He's a good talker. Uh, he's not young, and I know they wanted to keep the younger guys rather than the older guys, so I don't know. Um, plus, he's got a lot of heat with Paul Heyman, tremendous heat with Paul Heyman, and Paul Heyman is one of the people that's being asked on who to come in and who not to come in. So, um, you know, I'd say Douglas' chances are, Probably less than fifty percent, if just as a guess. He was talking about he's gone way downhill lately, though. Well, that doesn't help either, then. Uh, what's the situation on Joe Gertner? Is he um, going to get a shot at anywhere? Uh, not that I've heard. Not you that I've heard. You can't hear his name lately either. Yeah, cause I mean, I he's just he's been doing independence and you know doing independent stuff in the Northeast. Okay, and another archive question too. Uh, what happened with the um, WWF? Um, no, WCW title whenever they brought it on the WWF television uh, with Ric Flair that time. What was the deal behind that? Uh, Flair never lost the belt in the ring, and he was fired uh, for not drop, basically for not agreeing to drop it. And then they wanted him back, which was very strange. And so he took the belt with him on WWF TV and had it on WWF TV for a couple of months. And then there was actually a big court case between WWF and WCW, and the court ruled that the belt was the possession of WCW, so uh, Flair uh, was not allowed to, they had to give the belt back, so then Flair and Vince McMahon went and made um, a belt that was an exact duplicate, and they put that on TV for about a week, and WCW went to court again and, and beat Vince in court again, and that's when they started doing that blacking out thing until the Royal Rumble when uh, Flair won the WWF title, so that's the story on that. Now, how did that whole court thing work, because Flair, he had to make the $25,000 deposit, Right. Right. But they, so if they, they hadn't given him the, the money back, the belt was technically his. Yeah, I guess the, the whole thing about they couldn't just show it on TV because it was. Uh, I guess the feeling like was the WCW you know, thing when Hall and Nash went over. I think that the whole deal was well, Hall and Nash came later, but the whole deal was that. Um, well, similar to that. Yeah, though the whole deal was that that if they gave him that, that he put a deposit down on the belt, so if they gave him the money back, then they then he had to give them the belt back. But so the he belt did get property. Yeah, but the belt was the even though Flair had the deposit, you know, and all that, the belt was the property of the company itself and a trademark yeah. of the company, and they were using another company's trademark on their TV. So that's okay. that's how it was. That's how, how it went down. So what about um, Medusa? They couldn't they, um, sue the Medusa um, incident. Um, Medusa for throwing the belt in the garbage. They just threw the belt in the garbage. Um, they uh, they may have used the Medusa thing as as um. As one of the points in the suit when they sued WCW later, I'm not sure if they used it or not. Um, but they, it, it wasn't like he was coming; they were coming out week after week with the belt and showing the belt. It was more like they had a belt and threw it in the garbage. So I don't know. I don't know. That's um, you know, again, I don't know it's, it, 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 exactly how that all you know would, would have been, you know, legally. But you know, she didn't use it after that very first TV appearance. She just came in, they threw it in the in the garbage, and they never talked about it again. Okay, so that's what happened. Mm-hmm. Okay, what about um, Brian Adams and Brian Clark? They got a chance for the new WCW? Who? <laughs> Brian Adams? Uh, Chronic. Chronic? Uh, Brian Adams, I don't like his chances, and Brian Clark and Vince did not leave on the best of terms, but it was many years ago, so who knows? But uh, they, so I, I haven't, I really haven't heard anything other than I don't think they were on the list of the 24 that uh, WWF bought, so it's up in the air. I haven't heard of them being fired, either of them being fired either. So, you know, these decisions haven't been fully made yet. Yeah, because I think they probably might give it a new WCW. Uh, I think there's a good chance that they won't, actually. Pretty good chance. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those guys, they complain about doing jobs. And, you know, yep. I, I will say this. 
you will not get away with that in the WWF today, um, unless Ever. Ma unless maybe you're Steve Austin. But I mean, not not mid card guys. No way. It won't even be tolerated for a second. Did Triple H try a few times too? No, Triple H. Triple H is um, it's just totally different. He it isn't so much. It's not like he comes up and goes, "I'm not going to drop the title." It's like, why don't we do this instead? And he no, he's, them he's very a, good at coming up with scenarios, plan. and the scenarios protect him. Protect him, but that's not. I mean, if, if Vince McMahon said like, "Okay, you know, it's your turn to drop the title," he's not going to. He wouldn't say no. He wouldn't even think of saying no. He would just go, "Okay, no. well, we'll do it this way," and he'll do it in a way that protects himself. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, okay. So I know Rocky. Um, he um gets a lot of talent over too. So I pretty much respect him for that also. What, Rock putting people over? Yeah, you got to respect Rock as far as... I, I don't think I've ever seen a guy in the business as over as him that's, that, that, is, that puts over so many guys. I mean, uh, granted, he puts guys over on Monday, and he would always beat them back on Tuesday. <laughs> but, but, but he still did put, still you know, like Benoit, Benoit and a lot of guys... He put Benoit and a lot of guys over, um, you know, even Boss Man and stuff, you know. If you and even if, he, even if he got his win back on SmackDown, it wasn't like on Raw... He did the old Lex Luger job, or made him look stupid getting the win, or anything like that. Oh no, he's always professional. Yeah, always yeah. professional. Yeah, I know that those those kind of jobs, like those where like the Scott Hall or the Kevin Nash job, you know that. Yeah, he never did those. I mean, even though they were flukes, it was like you know he. I mean, I mean, it was always outside interference, but it wasn't like he didn't get up and start laughing. Ha ha! I just did a job. Like you know, yeah. you know what I mean? That shows how fake wrestling is. Type of an attitude. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Don't don't you hate that? When yeah, when, I mean, when, gu when guys are like, you know what I mean? When when guys are like, I, I don't say expose the business is such an antiquated term, but when guys like show like the that fans term. that they that they're not taking it seriously. To me, like as a fan, I feel like, hey, you know, it's like I take it as serious entertainment. Don't insult me when I'm watching it. You know what I mean? Definitely. And another thing too is those guys can still get over, even by putting someone else over. If I have to put someone else over, um, I can still get over. By the way I structured the match and by, you know, really having a, a good, solid match. And a lot of people don't realize that. They just think, well, I've got to do the job. Screw you, you know. But you you know, especially now, if you have a great job, if you have a great match, both guys get over. And if you have a shitty match, it really doesn't matter who wins because neither of you really got over. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a great point. Great point. I mean, everyone looks back at WrestleMania with Bret and Austin as, you know, this big turning point for Steve Austin, his baby face and everything, and he lost. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No, that's definitely definitely true. Let's go to uh, Franco in Ontario. Franco, what's up? Hi, guys. How you doing? Doing good. 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 Um, I have a friend of mine who, actually, I called on, on uh, last, a uh, couple days ago, anyway, it was a uh, pretty busy show. It was a great show. And I wanted to give you some information. Um, I have a friend of mine who goes to university in Minnesota. Uh, in, uh, I don't know the exact university. And uh, he saw on a board, um, I, uh, I don't know whether it was an audition call or a casting call, um, they were looking for extras. Uh, they were looking for 500 people. So he showed up, uh, which this was last Saturday, he showed up at this uh, casting call uh, to see if he could make some money um, as an extra. And apparently, uh, this is a Fusient, uh, uh the same company that uh -huh. wanted to buy WCW. Oh, man, Brian, have we talked about this one? Uh -huh. No, no, no. Not, okay, go, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. And... Um, he says to me, um, he went, he was asking to see, you know, what exactly it was for, for a commercial or for, it's actually, and this guy's, you know, don't quote me on this, but this is what my friend told me. Apparently, Fusient is trying to put together a group of wrestlers to put, to, to get a, a series of videotapes together, uh, uh, to launch and, and sell them. Uh, with the first edition being, you know, they're going to pay extras to sit, sit in, the, in the stands, bring out maybe ten or twelve matches, do something of of, of, of like a, like a pay per view on cassette, and and sort of uh, add, put some commercials together and 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 market it across the states and see if they can do town to town, city to city, once a month or once every couple of weeks, and 
and, and see if they can build that way. I, I, have you heard of anything uh, uh, of this? And, and I've been going crazy for three days on the Internet here trying to find something, and then next thing I know I find Fusion's interested in buying the Blair Witch Products uh, uh, production Art, company. Artisan Entertainment, Artisan, yeah. 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 yeah, have you heard anything like Fusion, that? Fusion Fusion still has ideas about wrestling. They just don't know what they are. Um, but that that is, um, I mean, there there are you know, they're, they're, they still you know, it's like they haven't given up on the idea of wrestling. But the problem is, is that like you know, they're trying to go at it in a way that doesn't involve you know good television. And I just think that I just don't think that you can tour without good television on, on a national basis. I mean. Um, and WCW you know, did the thing before where they hired people to sit in the crowd and kind of bombed. You know, you got you got they didn't hire people. I mean, they people never hired people. It was it was, it was um it was AW AWF was the one that hired people to sit in the crowd. Right. The, they, WCW would, with like the um the, like the no, Orlando taping so. No, the Orlando tapings they let people in free and they would give them the applause meter. You know, like at, at a game oh, okay, show or okay. something. <laughs> and yeah. so it was the fake crowd noise. Yeah, they tried that too. They they won't do that because I know with Bischoff, I think Bischoff in hindsight realized that that atmosphere uh, didn't work. But um, uh, you know, I mean, you know, Matt Rats has a fake crowd. You know, I mean, it's like yeah. they, they they hire all these like pretty teenage girls to be in the crowd to make it look like you know. And, and it actually, you know, Matt Rats. I, I, no, Donovan. By any chance, have you seen any of that? No, I haven't. Matt Rats. Okay, it's um. There's something there, but their appeal is so geared towards teenage girls that right. they're making a mistake. Because because they actually have um they've got some guys you know and you I, I think you're probably familiar with you know Ted Annis or Teddy Hart yeah uh, I think they're guys he's trained and um I mean there's no psychology I mean and I mean when I say no I mean no psychology <laughs> whatsoever they do like three minute two to three minute matches of some of the most incredible high flying stuff and it's it's actually it's actually pretty entertaining and, and at the same time numbing in that when it's over you know you know what I mean it, it's you know, it doesn't get to you, but right. you're kind of like amazed by watching it at the same time. Right. But um, you know, we, but but I mean, like I watched the, the debut and I was super impressed with the um, with the uh, what's the, the potential of, of many of the guys there, as far as if they learned to work and everything. They were they were they, they had great a acrobatic moves, but I mean, at the same time, when like that audience feel was such that I couldn't see a wrestling fan sitting through it because the whole audience is teenage girls and they're like. It's such a teenager product that I thought, you know, unless it was, you know, it's not going to get over something touring, put it that way. Yeah. One one other thing I wanted to ask you guys, actually two things. Um, I think uh, Jer they killed Jericho last night um, by uh, by giving Hunter the belt. Uh, I don't think anybody's the winner there uh, with, with whatever they were trying to do, maybe uh, by uh, Triple H. Hunter's the winner. <laughs> Hunter's the winner. Hunter... <laughs> Hunter can win anything he wants, I think, in the WWF. But I just think that Jericho, they really, really hurt Jericho yes, uh, by, by taking the belt away from him. Uh, I don't know whether there's a Trish angle, uh, Trish Stratus angle coming up with Jericho or anything like that. But uh, the other thing is, uh, with all the, with no clear cut baby face in the company now, um, is there any way that Vince uh, drop some money uh, to, to bring in Goldberg at some point in the next pay-per-view or the pay-per-view mm, after it's that. Not it's not, it's not going to happen in the next pay-per-view. It's not going to happen like that. But but um, as far as any way, it's, again, it's Vince's call. You know, it's like... I think you use him to rebuild WCW. Yeah. Not bring him in but, for a WWF right. show. But, I mean, the, the, the whole thing is, is and, and, and I, can see, I can see where Vince is coming from. Vince McMahon has a certain salary structure, and Bill Goldberg... Because of his contract, which is below that salary structure out of out of the water, and I think that um, it's more important to Vince to maintain it because he doesn't want to be like baseball and doesn't want to be like basketball and and, and these other sports that actually lose money. Um, I mean, give him credit; he's got full control, and he's not gonna when you when you break it for one guy. If he were Big bringing show. Bill Gold, you, well, you know, but, he but again. He did. He did. You're right. He did with Big Show. But and Goldberg open, has a far bigger upside, and they need him to help turn a company around. Big Show's just a big guy that wrestles hardcore matches. Okay, but at the time but they signed Big Show. Okay, and at the, you're right. Okay, but at the time they signed Big Show, a couple of years ago, they thought he was going to be the thing in wrestling. That's why they signed him to that deal. So, I mean, if they had thought that Big Show was going to be in this position, they would not have signed him for one quarter of what they signed him for. You know, they but they need Goldberg to be that thing. 
Yeah. No, I think I, I think that it's very, very important that they make that move. I just don't know that they're going to make that move. We'll have to wait and see. I mean, because, it's, it's, again, it's Vince's decision. And, and he this is one decision that, you know, everyone knows what the upside and the downside is, and it's just going to be a call Vince makes one way or the other. Yeah. And one, one thing about Jericho, real quick, I don't think it hurt him that badly in that, A, he lost to Hunter, who beats everybody, so what's the big deal? And, B, they really hadn't been pushing that Intercontinental title as anything special. I mean, it's not like Jericho was defending this title and, you know, like they were trying to do with Benoit for a while, just beating guy after guy to make it look like, you know, a viable title. It's just a belt that he had. You know, he was doing ma- he was doing jobs everywhere with that belt, so I don't think it hurt him. Um, last thing here. Uh, does, on Monday night, uh, does anybody expect um, uh, Linda to come out and Shane maybe to show up? Are we expecting some sort of a WCW uh, angle in, in, in any way, shape, or form? Because since WrestleMania, there hasn't been, uh, other than, you know, the, I want to say hi to the boys up on the ra- in the rafters, there hasn't been anything. And, and uh, I'm wondering, you know, do, are they going to start, you know, promoting this? Because, like you guys are saying, and, and you've been saying it since day one that you heard, they need to promote it, you know, and, and the, the WCW fan, I think they've lost the WCW fan. And, and for them, even to get the WCW fan to turn the TV on that first, uh, that first show, they gotta start promoting it. And I, you know, every wrestling fan is a wrestling fan above and beyond WCW and WWF, but I think that, um, if the WCW fan does click on Raw, for five or ten minutes, the first five or the last ten or somewhere. Well, I, at 10 I, think, o'clock. I think a lot of WCW fans, obviously from the rating, did watch Raw Monday. Yeah, but, but are, the they watching, are they point. watching to hear? You know, when is this new launch? Are they watching to to to, to see? You know, when are, when is this thing, this new WCW starting? And from what I understand, or are they watching because there's nothing else? That's true too. <laughs> a, little, a little, a little bit of everything. What is, this, what is this Shane McMahon Presents the WCW? What, what well, the heck that, is that's that? That's what the tickets for this non-existent event um, stated. But the, you know, but that's, the fact you know. that they pro- postponed it makes me think that they're not going to do something like that on Monday. You know, I, I think it'll probably be something like Linda comes out and goes, you want a divorce? Fine, I want a divorce. I want half your money. And then we'll have to watch Vince grovel for uh, three months. <laughs> trying to get <laughs> And that means the TV. I think that's what it's going to be, too. Yeah. Great, guys. Great show. Thanks very much for your time. I appreciate it. Okay, let's go to uh, Chris in Long Island. Chris, what's up? Uh, hi, how's it going? It's going good. good. Uh, I have a comment and a question for uh, Donovan. Um, the only match I've seen of him so far was off the APW website, the Click Movie. Right. Uh, it was a match with uh, uh, Jardy France, I believe right. his name is. Uh, it was a great match. Just want to say, I just, I, I hope you get a shot uh, somewhere. You know, WWE. Well, there, where else is there? But WWF <laughs> right now. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate that. You know. uh, and also, what I was going to ask from like an independent wrestler perspective, as far as the whole, the you know the, the single ownership of the two major companies now, does that is it kind of frustrating now that like at least before, if you were hardworking and, and noticed noticed the uh, independent guy, even though it took Modest and Daniels a long time, two guys like that that got a lot of attention outside of the big two, that there would at least be some kind of fighting between the two companies to say, well, let's grab Daniels before WCW gets them or, or, you know, vice versa. Now that there's only that one company, does it kind of like, I don't want to say like hurt your motivation or anything, because I'm, I'm sure, you, you know, I know you're dedicated to what you do and everything, but I mean, does, does that linger in your mind at all that like, you know, there's not oh, that yeah. kind of... I, I mean, it was always nice because, the, you know, for the boys' sake anyways, because if, if something happened over at WWF, they could go jump ship to WCW. Right. You know, so you had both those things to play against, but... I think at the moment, like right when it happened, when WWF took over WCW, I think everyone's, you know, opinion was like, man, you know, this is really going to hurt the business. It's going to hurt the boys. Um, but then I just, I just started to think, and I kind of thought, you know, I, you know, I doubted, you know, Vince and stuff before, and every time I do, you know, it ends up turning around for the better. So. Except football. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I know in, re, in wrestling, Vince has a phenomenal track record. <laughs> yeah, and in pro wrestling, you know, he, he's definitely the man. And so yeah. you, you never know what, what could happen. But I think, you know, we're just trying to wait and see what happens before we make any, you know, drastic uh, decisions. And especially, too, I mean, because, I mean, it was hard to tell because Jardy France is obviously a smaller guy, but and you look a lot bigger in comparison to him, but... I assume on scale to the WF guys, you're also uh, you're, you'd be a cruiserweight, right? Oh, definitely. Okay, because that's like a, that's the only match I've seen with you. So, like I said, that's why I had to compare. So, you know, next to him, you look 
you know, pretty big. Yeah, I um, think if WCW was still running and they were still pushing a lot of the cruisers, you know, I think, my my opinion is I think I would fit in, you know, good there, but... Oh, yeah, I think without question, you definitely... That's not happening. So. Yeah, you definitely showed ability in that match, I mean, just from the one match that I saw. Um, I had a couple questions for Dave, too. Um, the, the Triple H, the, the IC title, do you think that's just to maybe elevate that title? I mean... Like, just like Ryan was saying, they really haven't, the, the title really hasn't meant a lot in a long time. And Yeah, actually, actually I do, and I, I think it's also one of those things where they want, like, um, you know, you've got Austin with a belt and Hunter with a belt with Vince, and it's kind of like, yeah. Um, to yeah, definitely to elevate the belt and also to just really make that, that Austin-Hunter thing, you know, duo look like the two real superstars. And, you know, Hunter will have his belt, you know, to set up when they do the turn. Uh-huh. And, and they do the singles match between the two of them, awesome. or the series of singles matches. the belt and get more heat. And, yeah, and, at least if, if, he, if he drops the title, like if he does elevate it and then drops it to uh, Benoit or Jericho or somebody, then at least then it, it would mean something. At least so yeah. The problem is I think they're going to do a good job trying to elevate it, but then in the end it's going to be something like, you know, Austin before their pay-per-view match or whatever costs him the belt or something like that. And so it'll be like, you know... The guy gets it on the one that beat Hunter, as opposed to Benoit, whoever wins the belt from him, being the guy. Yeah, the guy actually, yeah, when he loses it, the guy, the guy wins that fluke thing where, it, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not gonna be, any, it's not gonna be Hunter putting someone over clean in the middle. Yeah, no. Um, also, too, because now, all right, if, if Undertaker and Kane are gonna be basically the two top faces, at least up until when Rock comes back. I mean, do you see them? Do you think that's in their minds is what they want to do, or will they at least give us at least like maybe some matches with like? Benoit and Jericho as a team, maybe against you know Triple H and, and Austin, at least just to just for some. Uh, I mean, they, you know, we may get it on Raw and SmackDown, sure. But I mean, uh, even some kind of like as a primary angle, not just like a one-time match where they build an angle s- on Raw. And I don't, I don't. I mean, it could. I just don't see it. It's not. Doesn't seem like that's the direction they're going. I see Benoit, and you know, it looks to me like you got Benoit and um, Jericho being built up for Regal and Angle. So, but then, so then, would you say that their plan for the next few months is just strictly? A series of tag and singles matches between Undertaker, Kane, Triple H, and Austin until they mm-hmm. turn Triple H. Um, I mean, I sense I sense it's going to be this tag, and then it'll be um, Austin and Undertaker uh, doing a program, and then you know it'll either be then set, and then after that, then that's when Hunter will do the turn. That's how I see it. I mean, I'm, I'm no one's told me that specifically, right, right. Okay. but it's been hinted to me pretty much too, though. Right. And I was listening to a, an audio show from uh, Between the Ropes with Mikey Whipwreck recently. Uh, it was it was earlier in uh, March, March eighth, I think it was. And he was a really, really entertaining guest, and I think uh, if you should try and get him on the show because he was very funny and just, I think he'd be the type of type of guest that uh, just like they like Nova and Zinc, all the listeners. I think he would fit right into that category. Um, okay. So if, you, if you could work that out, I think it'd be great. And also, do you, is there any shot of him of, of Heyman trying to get him in the team and with the Jerry maybe throw him into that whole tag team mix with like, the Hardys and Edge and Christian? Because I think it would work perfect in that sort of. You know, that's, um, that's I'm sure Heyman point. will try. I'm sure Heyman will try, and uh, those are like, to me, the odds of a guy like Whipwreck getting in are probably better on the WCW side, right. uh, like as a team as opposed to with, unless they, you know, you know, it's like with Edge and Christian. I don't see that one happening. Okay. Um, I mean, if they send the Hardys over there, which, which, you know, I mean, it's, it's all a possibility. Then yeah, I could see it, but I would see them them probably being more likely on the WCW side, both because for the size reason, and also just because. The, the WWF sites, yeah, the roster's packed. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, he said the one thing he has going for him is you know, he's, he's friends with guys like Foley and Benoit and everybody, and they like him. And he's got you know Heyman there to hopefully sort of you know go to bat for him. So I just think that team was too good in ECW for for you know to be split up like that. I think if they got a shot in WWF, they would have got over with with the type of matches that they had with the uh, FBI that they had them with uh, Hardy Boys and Edge and Christian and Dudleys and all that. I think it would just be I think it would just add to that because right now that those are the three teams they have. Those are really the only three teams that have that work that style. So after a while, you know, there's only so much you could do with them. So yeah, I think we've seen those three teams against each other. I mean, and not yeah. that you know, I mean, they're, oh, yeah, I, I yeah, wouldn't yeah. mind seeing Hardy's and Edge and Christian, you know, this on Monday. But but it, you know, again, it's, as far as being something fresh, yeah, it's not fresh. Okay, all right, it can't for, be fresh anymore. Uh, okay? I'll let you go. And uh, thanks a lot, and uh, good luck for Donovan and his career. And uh, thanks for holding me over. Okay, cool. I want to get Rico was so funny it. last night talking to the Hardys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Young Jeff. So, young, <laughs> young Jeffrey. Yeah. Young Jeffrey. Get a couple of a couple of these things in here. Um, who did Sean O'Hara, Palumbo, and Jason Jett get into fights with? Okay, let's see. Jason Each Jett and Sean, o- and Sean O'Hara went about 30 seconds before Sean O'Hara got a choke on him, right? Yep. Got that one right. And Palumbo tried to wrestle with Rick Steiner, which was a bad idea. 
<laughs> very bad. Very, very bad. Uh, Rick goaded him on song. all afternoon. What? Rick goaded him on all afternoon. Yeah, well, you just got to go, okay, you're right, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> you got to know your own limitations. Sometimes I just look at the Steiners and I go, you know, these guys are just dying for a fan to jump the rail or some wrestler to get pissed off at them, and I know they're just, they just try, you know? <laughs> they just try and get these fans to jump the rail, they just try and get these guys to grab their leg or whatever, just so they can just pummel them. Yeah. They do it for no reason. I mean, God, Rick Steiner with, that, that match with Conan? <laughs> <laughs> yep. I mean, that's not fun. That wasn't funny. That was bad news. I know. It's from Harry Simon, who says, you'll be happy to know that I'm officially recovered from the WrestleMania Trivia-thon. Yeah, he did a, Trivia, trivia, a thon question every day the week before WrestleMania on the website, and next week we're going to have who wants to beat that, who wants to beat the crap out of Shawn Michaels trivia. Uh, that's oh boy, That'd be another eight day series. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, see, do these wrestlers have a chance to go to WCW? AJ Styles, Air Paris. Don't know. Good question. Jamie Noble. I got to think they're gonna. That Jamie Noble was on that list. You know, of the of the names that we don't know. Just because yeah. I know some people that are very high on him, and I know his salary's low, and I got I gotta believe they're going to sign Jamie Noble, Evan Courageous. Don't know Crowbar. I know that they, um, you know, they haven't done anything with him so far. We had him on the show last week, so or whenever it was, just recently. Actually, what am I saying? We haven't had him. We we're did. having him on the show. About? I know. I'm losing my mind. We're having we're having him on the show in like a week or two. Okay. I got. I, got, I know. I, I just remember from the list that I I talked to him. About doing the show, so that's why. Vampiro, no. Shane Douglas, probably not. Mamelukes. Uh, Vito, probably no. And Johnny, I'm guessing yes. Johnny's got some potential, don't you think? Oh, he does. Johnny yeah. yeah. He doesn't get hurt. Yeah. And Terry Funk, probably no. Uh, what's going on with the racial discrimination lawsuits? Still on against Time Warner. Will Survivor Series be held in Toronto? Yes, as far as I know. Where will Ron SmackDown be held? I don't know for sure, but probably up in that part of the country. You know, uh, Ontario, Quebec, maybe Michigan. Uh, the King of the Ring started in 1993. That was also Hogan's last WF pay-per-view. The three worst pay-per-views in a row were 1999, Great American Bash, uh, Macho Man against Nash, 1999, Bash at the Beach, Macho and Sid against Sting and Nash, 1999, Road Wild, Nash against Hogan. Okay. <laughs> uh, what do you think about Ken Shamrock going to WCW? Certainly not now. Uh, does Vincent Mann now own the rights to OWN, the One Warrior Nation? <laughs> <laughs> I think that might have slipped through in the uh, trademarks that they were uh, buying. <laughs> they have. <laughs> Let's go to Scott in Connecticut. Scott, what's going on? How about Ed Leslie? Is he okay? <laughs> All right. Uh, I had a uh, quick question for Donovan. Yeah. All right. Uh, you may not want to answer this, but um, if they're, uh, looking at all the guys on uh, TV, whether it be WCW, WWF, if you could have one guy who you could just take back to the center and make them bump their ass off and just... Billy Gunn. Yeah, and you could ha you had the whole day to, to do your best to teach them how to wrestle, because, I mean, obviously someone who, you know, can't, uh, who would it be? Um, I don't know. That's one of those questions that uh, you really put me on the spot. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I really want to get in trouble. To be, to be say, honest, say like a guy who's like really retired, like retired where he's never coming back. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, they can die on you. I, I think. I think you know. I Tex McKenzie. On the <laughs> who? Tex McKenzie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to give a name that won't anything. come back to haunt you in later what life. Be, how about Adrian Street? <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah, I know you don't really want to ask that because, I mean, you know, the time may come where, you know, that could come yeah, back to question. Yeah, the thing is, is like, is, like, I'll just tell you real quick, I'm not, I'm not there. I'm not in the WWF. I haven't made it to the big, the big dance. So, to be honest with you, I, I'm not, it's not even my position to say that. I mean, uh, that, that's kind of the reason I asked you. Yeah. Because, I mean, you're, you're the guy, you see all these young guys, you know, work their asses off, and then you see guys slouching on, on TV, you know? I mean, it's definitely one of those things where, you know, there's there's guys that are getting paid by major companies that where I feel, yeah, you know, I'm I'm better than those guys uh, in certain aspects of the business, but uh, I'm not at liberty to say because they're the ones making money and yeah. I'm not. So uh, on the indie scene now, if you ask me that question, you know, I could probably answer it for you a lot easier. Hmm. But you know, in the WWF or WCW, I'm not. I'm not. They're the ones making money, so I'm I'm keeping my mouth shut until I start making some money. Uh, and uh, 
Dave Owens, and I'll run a few names by you, see if you can tell me what's up with these guys. Um, okay. What about, uh, what about Reno? Tex McKenzie. What about Reno? <laughs> Reno, if it was me, I would, I would, um, I would take a chance on him. Absolutely. Um, I don't guys. know that they have, I don't know that he's not on their list, but, um, I mean, I was impressed with Rick Cornell when he first came in there, and it just kind of, you know, they, they have to certainly give him some some character and everything like that. But um, I thought he was a solid worker, good well, worker. I was impressed with him on uh, when he did Saturday Nights and stuff like that. But I was impressed with a lot of those guys because I mean they had you know they had to be impressive, you know. Yeah. And then uh, another guy's. Oh, what about the big boss man? What about him? As far as just like where the hell is he? Um, he's in WWF. They're trying to come up with like a new gimmick for him, mm-hmm. just kind of freshen him up, show. and they, the, the big they, show they haven't really gotten around to it yet. The thing they did with the death of the Big Show's father was just horrible. That's probably the worst thing I've ever seen. Uh, yeah, as far as there. angle-wise, considering his father had already been dead, you know. I mean, it's one of those yeah. things that a you don't really base an angle on because it's you know it's not one of those things you should touch on, and b because he had, you know, it, it was so like you know people can easily find out he's already dead, you know. Yeah, that was pretty. That was pretty tacky. Uh, and 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 then then the deal, you know, where he wasn't really his father. Uh, and then yeah. they, then, and then they do all that, and then they really do nothing with it when it's over. You know, it's like now today. I mean, it, it's it's like that was. You know, it's almost like was that one. Was Rooster still there then? I'm sure he was. Uh, no, no, I, I, think, I, that I was, think that was. I think he like started writing it, but then he left, and so no, someone he was, else just he was already gone. finished it. He was oh already my god! Remember, he came in like November, and that feud. You know, that was like a, the, uh, that was like a November show. December feud. No, yeah. and Russo came in October. Yeah, yeah, okay. Russo was gone. Oh wow! Yeah, hmm. but the thing is about that feud is also I noticed around that time is when. WWF, WCW, and ECW were all doing the same thing, where they moved their world title matches lower in the card. And it was really weird, because I mean, Big Show had, they had to. Big Show was probably the, wor- the worst champion they've had in a, in a good while. And well, that, you know, the Big Show thing was because of the Austin injury, and they just felt they needed to give a babyface the title that month. You know, because, I mean, the plan was not, you know, the Big Show winning the title was a last-second plan, uh-huh. because they had screwed everybody, because they'd advertised Austin at that, at that uh, Survivor I Series. I they did that. Yeah, that was a re- and that was a real bad thing they did on that one. Yeah. I thought that you know, I mean, they should have just told the truth, but they you know had to get one last you know buy rate out of Steve Austin because they you know they didn't even know he was ever going to come back. Yeah, and uh, what, what do you think, um, guys like uh, Jarrett and uh, Nash and stuff like that? What do you think once their contracts are up and say they wait a while and they don't get a call? What do you think they're going to look for that like them themselves go at? You know. Nash will probably try to get into New Japan, and because of the size, they will at least give him a shot. Um, yeah. As far as Jarrett, I don't know. I mean, but, you know, Jarrett, there's always going to be someone who wants to use Jarrett at a certain thing, and, and so, you know, he'll be one of those guys where if someone starts up, he'll be one of the first guys called, but, again, mm-hmm. something's got to stay stable, you know, for him to... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, he may end up in his father's real estate business, for all we know. I mean, you know, he's... He, does, he doesn't have enough money to go on just living... Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it's, I mean, he's made good money for the last several years. I mean, I don't know how much he's, you know, I don't know what the, what his financial situation is. So, I, I, I couldn't answer that. Yeah, and no, no, with this Austin thing, you're saying it's building into, you know, Triple H turn of face and stuff like that, right? Those are things that have to be extremely careful to make it seem like Austin's still the heel, Triple H's baby face, rather than Austin's turn and face, Triple H's remaining heel. Mm, I think they'll do it. I think the way they'll do it, it won't be a problem. I really yeah. think by then. Cause I think if they had did it this Monday, it would have been perfect. Because I mean, he got the clean loss against Undertaker, right? And that's always a, a you know, a babyface thing. And I'm sure that's what that was done to get the heel turn over more. But I, I just think that since they've already done the fake turn so many times with Hunter, it's going to be so hard to do it the real time, especially with a guy like Austin, who these guys want to cheer. Well, they went for it Monday. Hmm. They went for yeah, the, it Monday. The, 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 crowd, the crowd was definitely ready for it Monday, yeah. But will they be ready for it next time after seeing yeah. Monday? They will. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yep. And what about um, with WCW, I'm hearing the date's going to be pushed back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. June. It's going to be June? Yeah, we don't know the for, for sure date, but I'm guessing June 9th, just yeah. as a guess. And I really think what they have to do is, first thing, if, if like, I mean, maybe not the first week, but maybe, you know, bringing a guy like Rock or something like that. Next week, have, maybe not in the singles, have like a tournament, maybe a battle royal, and have a WCW guy go over the Rock. They, I'd like I'm saying, not in the singles, maybe in a battle royal. Why like, not singles? Why not singles? Because it's too, um, it's, it's kind of like early? a bad message, you know? Too or maybe too early. A, a bad message, what message though? It's a message saying, I mean, this guy... Like, none of these guys that they hired, which is, uh, I'm not going to, like, fantasize, say, say, Booker T or guys they haven't hired. I'm talking about the guys they have, and I'm thinking Mike Austin is basically their only shot. Yeah, well, I'm sure by June they'll have some guys in there. 
And they can't well, just go I'm with these 24 like, guys. That's Mike why Austin they pushed you back. The only like, believable guy can go over Rock. And how many WWF guys are going to say, like, M- Mike Awesome went over Rock and a singles clean? I mean... Sometimes you got to do things like that to get yeah, people you over, do that, though, though. To, to make a company. Um, like we were talking earlier, Boss Man's beating Rock, yeah, everybody. That was, yeah, yeah, that's that right. Mike Awesome's better than Boss Man. I mean, Rock is is really good in the sense that he can lose a billion times and still be the most over. Rock can planet. do anything and stay over because he's like Ric Flair, and even more than Ric Flair ever was. In that, in that, it, there's something. He's just such a superstar. And the other thing is, is that you know, today, who wins and loses. It's it's important in the storytelling, but as far as guys getting over, I mean guys guys get over great losing a great match, you know. Not so and, much, and not so much anymore because there's only WWF now. Back when they had all three promotions going with one to uh, well, you know, the two main uh, promotions, two shows a week. ECW had one show a week. I mean, it's like one lo- a loss gets you know people don't remember it two weeks later, you know. They, they they still they still don't accept if it's on a pay per view, but even on a pay per view. You know, if you have a great match, I mean, I don't think that anyone, I don't think that the Hardys or, or the Dudleys got hurt, you know, by not winning that three-way. I mean, they're, I think they're yeah, in the yeah, same yeah. position they, they were in, and um, I certainly don't think Rock got, you know, Rock got hurt losing the title, and um, mm-hmm. I don't think that Benoit got hurt losing that match to Kurt Angle. You know, I mean, I just, because they, they all had great matches. Now, now, here's something interesting. If you're saying that they're going right now, they're going for two big tag team promos, whereas it's going to be uh, Jericho and Benoit against Regal and Angle, and then they're going to do Undertaker and Kane against Austin Triple H, right? Normally, the WWF's formula, formula is when they have singles built up for a pay-per-view. Every, I, I haven't seen a singles main event on Raw. Uh, well, no, not you know, last night. But I mean, besides that, they do so many handicaps and tags. You know, Try too to many handicaps. Them. What? You know what? I think too many handicaps because I'm, I'm I'm getting bored with the handicap. Oh thing. yeah, I hate them. Because I mean, it's either it's either a guy beats two people and he's Superman, or the guy loses and who cares? And 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 it's a punishment angle. You know. And, yeah. and and the other one with, with 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 when when two guys beat one guy, that's a hard one for people to get over in um, because the two guys that just won, I mean, what does it say for them? It took two guys to beat one. Yeah, unless unless in the rare occasion when they did the thing with Ben Juan Angle, when that that's when they they uh, did their feud, is because of the yeah. the handicap with Rock. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. Yeah, but that, when, that, I mean, that, that, that was going somewhere. Two handicaps against uh, one with Ben Juan, one with Jericho this week. You well, know? those actually, those uh, those are okay. I mean, I, I, the one like last night, I, what I, you know what I didn't like was it was two on one the whole match instead of tagging in and out because tagging in and out it gives you a better chance it's to like believable. make make believable comebacks. Whereas yeah. this one, like even though Benoit made that great comeback with all those German suplexes, it was totally awesome. Yeah. It's just something like where two guys of that caliber are beating. You know, everyone knows two guys of that caliber are beating on you. I don't care if you're Chris Benoit or anyone. It's just you're. It's it's just, you know it's just tougher. It's story that, that shouldn't be, you know? Yeah, yeah, but, but, I mean, the thing is, is that I think that the, doing those handicap matches makes sense because you're building up the idea where everyone wants to see Benoit and Jericho, you know, in a fair fight with those mm-hmm. two guys, so there's a reason for them to team up. So, you know, it's, it's, this one makes at least sense with, based on where they're going. All right, and who are mm-hmm. you guys, uh, picking for, uh, King of the Rings here? I, I, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but, I mean, as far as. You know, the name goes, somebody mentioned last night in email was, uh, Regal. Yeah, that, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying, but, I mean, that's two heels in a row. What's that wrong with that? I'm just thinking, I'm thinking this. I'm thinking, you know what? Angle was just, I mean, Angle was so predictable in the sense that he was he was basically at the level, almost at the level, and the King of the Ring didn't really do that for him, you know? He didn't get he didn't get help for the King of the Ring because it was a bad tournament. It's the same yeah, thing. Yeah, like, he, something's really bad good. Tournament. That... Plus, I mean, what they've been doing with this King of the Ring is saying, like, this has gotten guys far. You look back, Shamrock's not in the company anymore. Billy Gunn is... I don't even want to talk about Billy Gunn. <laughs> um, and then Angle, Angle's the only guy, but I think I, Angle didn't need it. I want this year. I want to see some guy. Well, Austin. Like, uh, uh, Austin's actually work. the one, you know. Yeah, but it was more Austin's uh, interview than actual winning the King of the Ring. Remember the That's tournament? That's yeah, He didn't beat Austin Jake Roberts. Yeah. And then, remember the, 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 the tournament where uh, Viscera won? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, and, and they had <laughs> Savio Vega go all the way to the finals. That was one of their really bad they nights had some in their goof history. In the finals for some reason. As, as, as stupid as that was, just the fact that, as far as he Savio Vega, some jobber, actually made it to the finals, I think is is the way they should go. No, uh, not no, as, I don't you know, see. Yeah, not a jobber, but I'm saying, <laughs> I don't think so. You know, maybe, How about Angle wins again? Who's breaking away from a team? Huh? What about that? Oh, you mean a tag team guy breaking away from a team like, yeah, like, like, I mean, you know, like, maybe like say, Andrew Christian or Jeff, Jeff Hardy? But Jeff Hardy, yeah. Hardy's Jeff Hardy, Jeff Hardy's a good Jeff one. Jeff Hardy wins. 
Or go, or you know what? Jeff Hardy could even just go to the finals and lose, and it would be good. Yeah, I mean, but I think I think what would, what would be good is is if um you know they had if, 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 whether it be Hardys or even Edge of Christian or whoever they're thinking about breaking up, whether uh, they be paired against each other, therefore they have that build up for that you know confrontation, and the person who wins goes on to win the King of the Ring. See mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, th- I think that's the best idea. Rather than Regal, I think Regal's Regal's doing main events now. Why does he need to win the King of the Ring? Same thing with Jericho. Same thing with Benoit. Same thing with any. Well, of Angle was stuff. too. That, well, no, I guess he wasn't. I just don't think that would go. I mean, storyline wise and vignette wise, Regal would be the best choice to do it with, because I could just see hilarious stuff with that. Oh yeah, King St- King William. Yeah. I could see oh, that God, too. That would be awesome. It'd be, and that would be hilarious. In the back and having yeah. to summon people, I just think that'd be tremendous. But <laughs> as far as as far as like the best thing to do to actually get this get this pay per view over, because I mean the last. Four have been horrible, as far as if you look back on the, uh, what it's done for people, you know? Benoit, Regal, King of the Ring Finals. Benoit against Regal? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Regal wins. <laughs> hey, Dave. Yes. It's Donovan. Can I, uh, can I say a couple things real quick? Go ahead. Absolutely. I just want to get this in here. I really want to, first I wanted to thank Red Bass Dean, and I wanted to thank uh, Dean Silverstone and Cauliflower Alley for putting on such a great event this year in las vegas and i think one of my main goals now is to really get a lot of younger talent involved with that cauliflower alley because it's not going to be too many more years and we're going to be uh the ones that are there and being honored so i i just i really stress how important cauliflower alley is it's taking care of like you know guys like uh johnny valentine and stuff and that they raised a lot of money for him this year it was like twenty five hundred dollars uh, and so that, it's a very good program. Bobby Heenan was there. Mike Tanay was there. You know, I know, I know you asked Bobby, uh, Bobby Heenan on your show, uh, if he liked it and stuff. And it's just more, each year more and more legends are showing up. And I think, uh, we need more and more of the younger talent out there too. I know APW is very dialed into that. You know, we bring most of our guys there every year. So it's definitely a great thing. And I'm glad you, Go ahead. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you brought that up because you know I used to go to uh, Cauliflower Alley and it was, you know, it was, it was really cool when I first would go because there were like all of these legends from the the 50s that you kind of like read about but never saw or, or anything like that. Yeah. And then like a lot of the, you know, it seemed like there was the, they skipped a generation and then some of the younger guys would go. Right. And and it, and it's like I, it, it's it's really you know the Cauliflower Alley is like one of the few things that links. The history, you know, the historical wrestlers like your Luthezes and type and, and stuff, but not, not just him, but like all of the names that, you know, Pat Patterson's or whatever, with the current scene. And it's, um, I think it's really good. I'm glad that you guys, it's really good for the younger wrestlers to go there because there's just like a, no, a lot of knowledge in that room. I mean, I picked up so much just going to those cauliflower alley things when so I was many younger. Stories. So yeah. many stories. So many stories, you know. You can educate yourself. And that's one thing, you know, that a lot of the guys today don't do. They don't educate themselves to the history of the business. And that's a great way to do it. Um, real quick, too, I just wanted to, to mention the APW Awards Banquet. Uh, for those of you that are in the, the uh, Northern California, Hayward area, it's going to be on Friday, April 20th. So we have that every year, and I think it's a great thing. We pretty much pay respect to everyone that's helped, you know, our company out. And, uh, you know, and I gotta thank Roland too because a lot of people they ask me, do you work for UPW or are you full time with UPW? And I say, no, no, Roland's the one that pays me. Um, I work for UPW, actually I wrestle there, but Roland's the one that employs me so I can make a living in, the, in this business. And so the awards banquet's a great way to, you know, pay respects to everyone that's helped out. And if this company ever gets, you know, into TV, I guarantee you, we recognize good talent, and there's there's a handful of good guys out there we definitely have our eyes on. So I hope something comes, you know, really quickly. Okay. I want to go through these really quick. We'll get back to the phone calls. This is well, Kid Romeo and Jamie Noel will be kept. Um, we talked about Jamie Noel a second ago. Kid Romeo, I think he's got a real good shot of making it. If it was up to me, I would, I would, I would pick him. What are your thoughts, Brian? I'd take them both. Yeah, I, mean, I would too. Uh, who do you think Vanderlei Silva's next opponent would be in the next Pride? I would think... Jamie Noble that, is really small, though. 
Yeah, but they've got a lot of good I small guys I remember watching there. him in with, there with Rain. He didn't look much taller. No, he's not. I mean, there's. I, I have absolutely no problem with that. If I were in a company, I'd bring him in anyway. I'm just looking at it from their standpoint. I think Romeo's got a lot of charisma, too. I think yeah. he's great. I, yeah. I, I, I like watching him. You know, in fact, with Romeo, of all of the guys in WCW, most of their entrance music um, can be changed. But I remember when I was talking to someone from Titan, and we were going through the list, and, and I mentioned Romeo, and I go, this is the one guy who you keep his entrance music and you keep his ring entrance. Because he only had like two or three weeks on their TV before the thing went under. Yeah. And I go, like, you know, he he's good. He is good. And they, I think they recognized it, too, because, you know, they gave him that big you know push in there with Ray and Kidman and, and yeah. him and uh, Ilk Skipper, and they had great matches, too. Mm-hmm. The, the last pay-per-view match was, was really good. Donovan, did you see the last Nitro? Uh, yes, I did. What did you think of that when uh, Vince showed up? Uh, it, was, it, was, it was definitely, you know, it was something that we had been talked about before the show started. So, mm-hmm. you know, of course, everyone was kind of, they kind of know what's going to happen before it even happens. But I thought it was definitely good for the viewers. I mean, for, as a fan, as a wrestling fan, it definitely generates a lot of talk. It was a moment. Yes. How about it, Flair's it, interview? It, it, Wasn't it, that it, awesome? How about Flair's that? interview? Flair's? Flair, I thought Flair's interview was awesome on that show. Yeah, I thought it was too. There was, I know Roland said Roland was like, man, you know, I just, I didn't, I didn't really like Flair's interview, and and uh, because he was yelling and just really, you know, screaming at Roland. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. But I think it got over the point that Flair was really hot that this was happening. You know, <laughs> and it was over. Yeah, it's like it's like this is my last interview, and you're gonna remember me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he was definitely over. On the Vanderlei Silva thing, if it was up to me, I would not have him fight until Sakuraba is ready to come back because the last thing they need is to put Vanderlei Silva in there with a really good opponent and then have him have him lose, then bring Sakuraba back for revenge on a guy who's lost and have Vanderlei beat Sil- Sakuraba again. <laughs> so I think it's real important not to have him fight anybody um, until Sakuraba is ready. But that may not be their decision. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is from Josh who goes, I heard you talking about MattRats.com and checked it out. The trailer for the show featured all kinds of crazy high spots that would make the Hardys and other Thrill Seekers proud. What is their history? Do these guys have any background or a chance in the future? They're trying to syndicate the TV. Mandalay, in fact, is involved in that. Um, there's not really any history. It was just they did like one or two 30-minute uh, seg shows, and um, the announcer is great. You know, Moro Renal is a great announcer. They have a thing, Donovan. I don't know if you have read about this or heard about this. They, they do a, a, like, it's like a platform on the um, ring post. Okay. So a lot of their high flying moves, instead of being from the top turnbuckle, are actually from the platform on the ring post and doing moon salts off there or knee drops off there. So it's like you know about a foot higher. So it's the highest flying high flying moves in a ring that I've ever seen. Oh wow! When and actually, I like as an as a thing. In fact, uh, I would I would think about you know because it's something new. Um, and I would if if like I was running a company, that's something that I would steal because I thought it was like you know it it. Even though it, it came off really Innovative. good and it's not contrived, if you know what I mean. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. They call it with the launching pad is what they called it, which I didn't really go for the name, but I, the idea that they had this little like platform up there and these guys climb the top ropes, then climb to the pad, and then do like you know, I mean, one guy did a, uh, I guess it would be a 540 centon, you know, which was just totally ridiculous. But, I mean, like I said, their high flying moves are out of this world. I mean, they're not, they're teenage guys. I think they all look like they're under. You know, Ted Annis is probably the oldest one, and he's probably like 21. Right. Um, and I think 21 and, uh, is a cutoff line. Is that what it is? I know. I remember. You know, Ted <laughs> Hart's involved with this. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah, he's he's probably like the Booker. Yeah, I remember he came here about a year ago, and he got in the ring for probably, oh, probably 30 minutes or so. And I'll tell you, like, I don't I don't know him as a person or anything, but he was incredible to watch in the ring for 30 minutes. I mean, the kid is is, a, is a, a natural when it comes to certain things. I don't know too much about the psychology. I didn't really get a chance to see him work a whole match. But he's definitely a solid, you know, when it comes to certain things. As he's he's in, in the ring. He's one of those guys who just seems like he can do everything he visualizes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's a perfect way to put it. Yeah, um, they have, um, you know, I mean, um, Davy Boy Smith's son, Harry, who's probably like 14 or 15, um, he's in there, they call him the Bulldog, and then the rest of the guys, there's friends that those two, Harry Smith and uh, Ted Annis grew up with, 
um, like o, o. J. Wilson, I think is. I don't remember all their names, but they're T. J. Wilson, I think. But they're like kids. They all grew up together. They probably all learned in that like ring, you know, that the Hearts train guys in. Right. And and you know, a lot of them are, are Calgary guys. Brian knows some of the guys too, right? That, that yeah. went up there. I think there's like uh, four of them that worked our shows. One of them was yeah. like 16. One was 18. Um, can't even remember what the other two were. Same age range though. Yeah. It, it, it's it's young. it's great. Uh, I mean, if you watch the the first TV, you'll be you'll be impressed. But again, like they have to change the marketing of it because that uh, that audience thing, the feel of the audience, just uh, it, it it just it doesn't it didn't go for me. You know, I know just, exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, because I mean, none of them were wrestling fans. They were. I mean, they literally the whole audience was hired teenage girl models. Mm-hmm. And and so it's just you know you hear all the screeches and everything like that and they're but they're behaving as they're told as opposed to there's no I guess when you watch the match there's no emotion because it's a fake crowd right so natural yeah. feeling yeah none none yeah. yeah let's go to let's go to Vince in New York Vince what's going on hey what's up not too much hey um first of all for the King of the Ring I was thinking if Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy went to the finals that could be a good match it could could be worth the split up angle I had an idea for the WCW, I don't know what you guys thought of this. Now, it would have to be a ways down the road because they'd have to get um, a better time slot and everything, but if maybe around December or so, Linda goes to Shane and says, I was able to find a loophole in the contract. You can have one spot in the Royal Rumble. And then in December, have WCW use, uh, I don't know if they're going to keep the Starcade name or whatever, but you know, have their own little maybe 20-man Royal Rumble thing for Starcade. And that one goes mm-hmm. on now. You don't want to do that because you don't want to dilute from the WF's Royal Rumble. I mean, you well, can do it a different way. It Plus, year, doing I mean, that makes it like, um, you know, WCW's a second-rate promotion. You know, you guys have to win this Royal Rumble, and the winner gets a shot at the big time and go to the WWF Royal Rumble, and then it just makes, you know, WCW look like the second-rate joint. Well, I was just thinking that because um, if they're going to try in a promotional things, and Vince isn't letting right now his, um, they're doing the story with, uh, like, Michael Cole and stuff, can't even say the WCW name on TV. Maybe they could, uh, you know, Maybe they can try to find Michael Paul to get uh, <laughs> on TV or whatever. What, what I missed, what you said? They could maybe try and find a loophole to get some WCW talent over there to start in a promotional. I mean, I wouldn't want the WCW guy to go into the Royal Rumble and win it right away because that would really make it fixed, you know, look fixed and everything. I think the yeah. loopholes need to be something like, you know, there's a loophole in Rock's contract, so he leaves. And they do the invasion. Yeah, I guess. And, and, and you I want think, to make a loophole where it makes one company look like it's the place to be, and everyone wants to get there by finding a loophole. Unless they're doing it for WCW to build it up. I don't yeah. know. I also, um, listening to the WWF Access thing last week, and uh, Bubba Ray mentioned that he'd like to go to WCW to win the belt so that they could be the only team that's done it. Am I wrong in assuming that the signers... Won all three titles. Not ECW. Uh, all, all three. St- Sorry, never won the AWA. But that's what no, no, no. I'm talking. Bubba Ray was saying ECW, WWF, WCW. I don't think the Sirens ever won the ECW. I don't think they did. I don't know I if they, they did. did. I know they were there, but they were there, but I don't think they ever did because they never did a job when they were there. Because I remember that was the big thing. I remember when they came in, it was like, okay, to Paul, it's like, okay, are you, this is when the, when those guys like were like big in Japan and weren't, and the guys that were big in Japan didn't like doing jobs in the United States because it. It made the newspapers over there and and all that. And I was going, okay, let's let's see you get him to do the job. And he goes, oh, no problem, no problem. They'll be professional. And then they left and they never did a job. <laughs> well, that was <laughs> kind of like kind of like Sid. <laughs> that was in a time frame where I where I lived. We didn't have cable, so I didn't really see any wrestling. So I'm not really too aware of what happened in the mid '90s anyway. Yeah, yeah, they were they were in ECW, but they never held the belts. All right, all right, thanks, guys. Okay, we are pretty much out of time. I just want to read one real quick thing before we get out of here, and that's that the Big Show boss man angle was Terry Taylor's idea, but he had a different ending and direction for the angle itself. So anyway, so that's what that was all about. Because Terry Taylor actually left before they finished the angle, and then he, all, he went back to WCW as well. Um, mm-hmm. Anyway, Donovan, I want to thank you very much for doing the show. Thanks a lot, Dave and Braun. It was great. Okay, and Donovan, hopefully we'll be seeing you like real soon. I'm going to try to get to Vallejo on the 14th. Yes, and definitely, and, you're, and definitely uh, the awards banquet too. If you if you're if you don't have any, let to me do that definitely anymore. let me know about that one because that one Hayward, you know, I would love to go that to that. Cool, and I will go too. I will. I I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you later. Okay, thanks a bunch, Donovan Thank and Brian. Guys. Of course. Okay, Brian, thanks for joining us this week and uh, next week uh, Monday. Of course, we're we're uh, we're going to be covering uh, 
I guess what's going on in the weekend. Actually, a pretty quiet weekend in the States, but a big weekend internationally. There's a big show in Tijuana tonight. There's the Pride tonight. Uh, there's the, actually, the Osaka Dome would be Monday, but on Monday's show, we will have all the results from the Osaka Dome. And um, let's see. And then, uh, of course, Tuesday, we're going to have Ken Shamrock on, and we'll see everybody Monday at 5.